Kevin Capillaries with us, founder and president of Cap Thesis. Thank you for being with us. So we have five days in a row of gains and new record highs for the NASDAQ 100 and S&P. Um, your thoughts on where we're headed? Hi, Nicole. Pleasure to see you again. Thanks for having me. Well, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ and many others, bullish patterns continue to work, right? And as long as that is the case, we have to remain inside the trend. Now, the question is, how does that keep on happening, right? And so I'm looking at the S&P 500 specifically when we have a target right now of 5,030. That was from our breakout from December 1st. So what's important about that is that breakout zone never got violated. And that is because the moves overall have not been huge. And that really just means there's fewer or less two-way volatility, so no, not many whipsaws. So by the numbers, there's been just one 1% 1 decline since the lows, right, compared to nine 1% gains. But only four of them have happened since the middle of November. So things have really slowed down to that extent. And really, that's what you want to see after a strong start to uh, a market turn like this. And you can go back in history and see 2021, 19, 17, 13 even, all started out of volatile periods and then ended up being mature, consistent and longer uptrends than people thought were possible. Understood. So um, as you look and you see the catalysts that have been driving the market thus far, can you have that target of 50-30. What would be the leading reasons? I mean, healthcare is a potential uh, market leader. I know tech has led the way thus far. Um, your thoughts? Right. Well, by the numbers, of course, the bigger names are going to lead, but what we want to see is good breath, right? And I think you have different interpretations of that, but we've tracked this very closely. And for the most part, you've had strong breath, like not extreme, but it's always, I would say always, but the majority of the time over the last, you know, almost three months now, we've seen positive breath. There's been periods of time we've had seven days in a row of positive breath. There's been a number of times we had four days, including right now. But if you go back since, again, beginning of November, there's only been the consecutive down days of breath only twice, right? So it hasn't gotten longer than two days in a row. And that really means that dip continues to be bought. You can look at it in various ways, but you know, there's, there's been pauses along the way, but those pauses have led to buying opportunities. So I think one thing we have to look for is, you know, buyers have been so used to getting immediately rewarded by putting their own business into the system, having new highs. Once we do get a you know, true lower high, and cannot get back above, that just may try the patience and eventually you know, create the lower high, which is the beginning stages of a potential topping pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, I just saw a headline pass that Microsoft is now marching to that $3 trillion mark and Apple being the only public company to finish a trading day above that $3 trillion mark. I mean, what do you think about these names in the Magnificent Seven? Do you lean towards some over the others? You know, they've exchanged leadership roles along the way. And again, I just I try not to think about how big each one of these stocks are, I'm trying to look for patterns, right? And along the way, you'll see them break out. And most recently, I think you've seen the, you know, comm services do very well, right? So, you know, Alphabet, Meta, and such. But Amazon as well coming out of what used to be a very long base for a long time, you didn't do anything, right? And so you're gonna have, you know, changing of leadership even within those bigger names. But I think we have to also remember that and if you look at 2023, you know, they, the Magnificent Seven did have a very good run, but there are there were dozens of stocks in the S&P 500 actually did just as well, even better, right? And so we don't talk about them as much because they're not really household names, but any time we can look for areas that, you know, haven't broken out yet and think those are the next ones to maybe take us to the next leadership role to get us to new highs. I also wanted to, the dollar is pulling back a little bit. I saw the 102 handle today. Um, your thoughts on the, the relationship, because you have the dollar, the 10-year yield, and Bitcoin. And sometimes these move together or apart. I mean, it's interesting to watch that. For example, you had yield pulling back a little bit, but tech soaring. So tell me a little bit about the dollar, yields, and Bitcoin. Right. So the dollar, I think, it starts there. It's the easiest one to see if you overlay you the S&P 500 or Bitcoin's interesting as well. Now, if you look just at the last two years, it's, it's the simplest thing to see, right? The dollars mean one way, S&P the other. And, you know, the S&P just made a new high, but let's be honest, it's really just been sideways moving for the most part for over the last month. That started as a dollar started to rally. So not a distinct difference, right? S&P hasn't rolled over yet. But what I think what's interesting about Bitcoin, and we talked about this in October, was the dollars just started to roll over a bit. And that's when Bitcoin started to get a bid and started to rally in the middle of October. That was one week before the S&P 500 bottomed, right? And so in that case, 
speculation in Bitcoin, for whatever reason, led what obviously has become a very strong rally overall for risky assets. And now the reverse has happened, right? You can call, we know the ETF announcement marked the top, but at the same time, if you look at what the dollar was doing, it started to rally right before that. And so Bitcoin started to slow down, right? And so, you know, just take this one step further. Now, who's leading who here? If the dollar rally is real, then Bitcoin's troubles will probably continue. If this little, you know, bounce we have here is going to fail that 200-day moving average, then obviously speculation is back on. You know, I think it's an easy thing to see. I don't think we look too much into it, but with correlations like this, especially over the long term, I pay attention to them until they change. Yeah, understood. So um, for Bitcoin, do you think that because now there's the idea that there's more inflows into Bitcoin because of the ETFs being approved? You know, when people say Bitcoin 100,000, I mean, does that sound crazy to you or is that something that seems possible, I guess, at some point? Nothing in Bitcoin sounds crazy to me at this point. But, you know, again, if I'm looking at this from a pattern perspective, you know, try to not think about the noise as well. And, you know, we have a pattern target based off of a huge uh, foundation breakout up near the last all time highs. Right. And so thinking about that is, of course, that Bitcoin can oscillate all the way down to almost you know, 30,000 and still be above that breakout zone. So as we know, volatility is heightened to you know, a thousandth degree with Bitcoin. But if you just look at it over time, it does pay attention to technicals pretty well. And even along the way over the last year, had a series of you know, rising wedges, whatever you want, or falling wedges were bullish, took advantage of them and broken out. So now it's a test, right? Because if I look at Bitcoin right now from a daily perspective, it's got a topping pattern over the last few weeks. If you can hold here, you know, that will negate that and potentially create another, you know, bullish pattern to leverage on its way up higher again. Thank you so much. It's great to see you, Frank Capillary of Cap Thesis. Thanks. Thank you.